In this Breeze review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this app. Breeze is an app that lets you organise plans and visualise team progress with project boards, task lists and timelines. So as soon as you log into Breeze, you find yourself on the project page. We're greeted there by a Welcome to Breeze project. So this is a sample project but the layout is essentially the same, so it's a really good way to, to learn how to start using it. We can see straight away that this is the Ideas tab. We can add a task at the bottom and type in the name of the task and click Add. So next up is the To-Do list, which actually has more information on how we can go into more detail with our tasks. For example, if you click onto a task to see what's behind it, you can see we're greeted by this page where we can edit a description, we can log work by setting a time on it, we can start a timer and we can also add a to-do list. So we could actually set a custom to-do list name. Once you've created the to-do list you can actually assign that to a person and set a due date on it as well. Right at the bottom comments could be added and just up here we have a wide array of different selection choices. For example, we have status. The status could be set to done, ready, on hold, or block. We can color code it. We can add a tag, attach a file, assign it to someone, set a due date, estimate a time frame on it, subscribe, archive. And if we go over to more, we also have different settings such as copy, move, repeat task, email for task, public link, and don't show to clients. Another feature is that you can actually drag and move tasks. As we can see, it goes in the order of ideas, to do, doing and done. And this is why the drag feature is really helpful because depending on where the task is up to, you could drag it to to do. And then once you're actually doing it, you can drag it into doing. And when it's completed, you can drag it into done. That way you've got sort of the perfect workflow. Right next to the welcome to breeze title, if we actually click on the menu there, you can actually invite more people. You also have options for project settings, archive project, add in a swim lane, archive and tasks, or deleting the project. Of course, this is just the sample project, but this does show you exactly how it would look if you're adding your own tasks. If we actually go over to tasks, we can see that task that we created earlier. We can click on the task, and then we've got all the information there. You have this menu at the side where you can sort by due date, projects or status, show as a list or show as cards, filter it by who it's assigned to, created by or subscribed to, or filter it by users. Obviously, if you wanted to create an entirely new project, you would just go ahead and click new project, name the project, select people from your team and add email addresses of the people you want to invite. Next to projects, we have calendar. The calendar brings up all the tasks. We can see here, if we click onto there, then it brings up the task. You do have the option to just drag the task and then that adjusts the time frame. You can change the calendar by month, week, or even day. If we go ahead and click schedule, then that lays it out in a list view of all the tasks. We can see there, it just goes day by day. If we click onto team workload, then we can see which tasks are assigned to which people and if they're distributed evenly. So next up, if we go to reports, so with reports, you can adjust the date to a different time frame. If we go over to time tracking, you can actually run reports on different options, such as time tracking by users, time tracking by tasks, projects, totals, user workload, task workload, tasks due by users, tasks due by projects, tasks created, tasks updated, and task completion. We can also filter it by these options here, such as projects, users, lists, tags, swim lanes, and statuses, as well as an extra filter tab for billable, not billable, not archived, hidden, done to-dos, not done to-dos, project templates, and archive projects. You would obviously just click the run it button there, and that's how you would get your report. The last page we have is the activity page. This shows you all the activity and for all the team members as well. It's got it set out minute by minute so you can actually see the activity for everyone. You can also open the tasks just by clicking on the links there. That's pretty much everything. What do I think of Breeze? 
Well, overall, I think it's a fantastic organisation tool. At first, it was maybe a little bit daunting just because there were so many different features. However, they do have a really good help section which breaks everything down. It was actually really helpful having the sample project. That way I had a good idea and could actually visualise how an actual project would look. I think Breeze makes it really easy to organise plans and track your team's progress. Once I got the hang of it, it was really easy to use. Would I recommend Breeze? Absolutely. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. In this cheat layer review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this automation tool. Cheat layer lets you build white label automations with no code tools and open AI machine learning. Once you've logged in, you'll come over to the dashboard. Here we can see we've got instructions to install the Google Chrome extension. So if we just click on there, that'll take us over to Chrome Web Store. And there we can obviously install this. So I'm going to be using Amazon as an example today. Once you've pinned the cheat layer extension, if you just click onto it. And once we hover over products, we can see that we've got this little box and it also says add to cheat. So if I click on to add to cheat, this takes us over to this page. We can choose our selector type. It's obviously automatically set to CSS selector. But we've also got the options of attributes, XPath, and action recorder. We can also choose the type of action from scrape to Google Sheets, scrape to Google Docs, create event, print to console, OCR image to text, object detection, sentiment analysis, run code on tab, click link button, send to webhook, get data Google Sheets save variable, set value, download file, set inner text, key press, hover, scroll, save to cloud, screenshot, AI generator, and PDF parser. So first I'm going to use the print to console action if I just click on there. So as we can see now that we've selected print to console, this box shows up. And if I just go ahead and click on print to console, it's highlighted our disk and it's brought it over to this section here. You'll also notice we have this file section here. If we click on there, we have a few options. We have new, new folder, export cheats, import cheats, run, save, save as, and GPT-3 code generator. So if I was to select new, so we've selected new, that just makes a new console output. We also have new folder. If, say, I wanted to be organised and have everything organised in specific folders, then I could go to New Folder and I could just title this folder name and go ahead and click OK. We also have some options at the very bottom of the right hand side. We've got Website, which obviously just takes us to the website we're on now. We have Code, so if I click on there, then that brings up the script. And then there's also the option for No Code. If I wanted to reselect something with Cheat Layer, then I'll just refresh the page, bring up the Cheat Layer tab, hover over the product I'd like, go on Add to Cheat, and here I've got that Options menu again. So if I go ahead and go on Action Recorder, and so this will record all our mouse scrolling, anything we type on the keyboard, it's going to record all of that. And then if I go ahead and click on code, we can see the code there for us scrolling with our mouse and clicking on the keyboard. If we also go on no code, we can see that as actions from scrolling to pressing on the keyboard, pressing on the keyboard to more pressing on the keyboard. If I wanted to save this specific automation, then I could go on file and just go on save. Now clicking on save should take us over to a page where we can just add it to a folder and set the name. But unfortunately, I am having some problems with this and it just seems to be loading. If say we wanted to pull some data, and add it into Google Sheets or something like that. Then we can go onto Cheat Layer, select what we want to select, go to Add to Cheat, and click on Scrape to Google Sheets or Google Docs. So once you've clicked on Scrape to Google Sheets, all you have to do is put in your Google Sheets URL into there, make sure the sheet name is matching, and then you would go over to File and click Run. Obviously, before all this, you need to sign in with Google. And that's everything I'm going to go through today. That being said, there is a whole array of different features that can be played around with. So overall, what did I think of Cheat Layer? 
Well, there's no denying that this is a very powerful tool for building white label automations without having extensive coding knowledge. Unfortunately, as a layman, I just don't know much about this topic, so at times was pretty confused. I did also have some issues with trying to save the automations, and I'm not sure if maybe this needs to be looked into. However, in conclusion, I think this is a fantastic tool for those that know what they're doing. I would definitely recommend. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. In this Creator AI review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this support tool. Creator AI is an artificial intelligence tool that makes it fast and easy to create content for your blog, social media, website, and many more. Upon logging in to Creator AI, we are greeted by the dashboard. Below the dashboard, it has a project section. It's obviously automatically created a project called Daniel's Project. You can, of course, add a new project and just put in the title there and the description. So there's a big banner saying, what would you like to do? If we scroll down, we can see all the features that the AI can generate content for. For some examples, headline, blog intro, blog body, email text, Facebook ad title, Facebook ad text, and this goes on and on with loads and loads of different features. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on YouTube video description. This takes us over to this page. Now, if we did change our minds, we can just select the AI assistant. We've got all the options to choose from there. What you will first do is put in your video title. Once you've put in a video title, if you just put a keyword to rank for, then below there in settings, we have a couple of options. In creativity, we have optimal, non, low, medium, high, or max. I'm gonna set this as high. We can also select the number of outputs from one to two, three, all the way up to six. I'm gonna go for three. We have tone of voice, so you can set this for whatever you're going for. You could do friendly, angry, sad, I'm going to try charismatic and then there is also the option for emojis. I'm going to go ahead and tick that. Then once you put that in, if you just click create, once we click create, we can see it's generated a YouTube description for us. Now, obviously our title was how to get a million YouTube subscribers. So it's taken that on board and has given us almost a step-to-step -step guide to put into the YouTube description. Got include a link to subscribe button in the video description, ask viewers to subscribe to your channel in the video, end your videos with strong call to action to subscribe, and so on. If we go back to the dashboard, we can see which other features we can try. At the top here, we can see they're split into sections. We've got it on all, but we can obviously go have a look at blog, digital ad, e-commerce, social media, video, or writer. There's so many different results here from photo post caption to business or product name, to even love letter. If we go ahead and try photo post caption, it will ask us, what is your post about? I've just put in there traveling to Disney World, and we're gonna set the creativity to medium, tone of voice friendly, emojis ticked. And as we can see there, it's generated us three outputs. The first one being ready to make some magic happen at the happiest place on earth. And that's pretty good if you ask me. Again, there's loads of different features here. There's even a creative story set the creativity as medium, output free, tone of voice friendly. As we can see, it's actually generated a full story about a ghost which is stuck in purgatory until they can visit Disneyland. So if we go back on the dashboard and just look to our left, we can see that there's quite a few different options to choose from here. Now, editor is just the section that we were in where obviously you can select your AI assistant. There is also the option for documents. So if we click onto there, and then as we can see documents here, you can find all the documents you have created. If we go on new, then that takes us over to the AI assistant and we can create a new document. We also have the AI assistant, which just gives us a, a list of all the different AI assistants. We have the favorites tab where we can favorite our best AI assistants. We also have the open form section. If we just click onto there. So in the description box here, we can sort of put whatever we want and it's going to try and generate this without being defined to the specific AI assistants. So if I just type in a command in here, so I've just gone for top 10 wealthiest rappers. And if I click search there, then as we can see, it's actually just generated a list of the top 10 wealthiest rappers. 
If I try a title for a self-help book based on waking up early, and we click create, and straight away there, it's given us three outputs. The Early Riser's Guide to a Successful Life, Wake Up Early and Change Your Life, How to Use the Power of the Morning to Transform Your Health, Wealth and Happiness, The Power of Early Risers, How to Maximise Your Morning to Transform Your Life. As we can see, the artificial intelligence is creatively coming up with these results. As we can see, there's loads of different options that can be done in the open form format. Below open form, if we click on to output, so here we can see all the artificial intelligence output, everything that we've inputted in and tried to get results from, the outputs will be shown here. As we can see, there is our book title, The Early Riser's Guide to a Successful Life, and uh, we've also got the top 10 wealthiest rappers there. Finally, at the bottom, we have a translate box. So as we can see, we've got this at the moment from English to English. We could change this to from English to Swedish. And if we just enter some text into the box, then this will give us a translation in Swedish. You can always do this the other way from another language to English. If I paste some Japanese into there, and we can see that that says hello. And that's just about everything. So what do I think of creative AI? It was super easy to use and I had a lot of fun playing around with it. There was a massive selection of AI assistants to choose from. And then if that wasn't enough, there was also the open source, which worked equally as well. I really do see massive potential for this tool and it's something I can definitely see myself using in the future. So would I recommend Creator AI? I would definitely recommend it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. In this Creaty review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this premium Lottie and Vector library. If you have any questions, please leave them down below, and I'll also leave a discounted link so you can always get your money's worth for Createes. Createe is the world's first premium Lottie library. Once you've signed up, you come over to the dashboard. As we can see here, it says we don't have any saved designs yet, but if we just go ahead and go on Browse, and this will take us over to a library of Lottie animated designs. There's some filters at the side here. So we have collections where you can filter it by different collections. You can filter it by free designs and you can also select the type. So there's all animated illustrations, animated icons, illustrations and icons. I'm going to set that to all. There's then industry. So we have loads of different options here. 404, advertising, agriculture, animals, art, and so on. If we scroll down there, we can see there's loads of different options. We also have the option of camera, where we can filter it by flat or isometric. We have color, where we can select outline or solid. And then we also have people, where we can filter it to include people. So as we can see, we've got loads of different designs here. If we hover over them, it will start to play the animation. Any particular ones that we like, we can obviously click on the little heart button and that will add them to our save section. If say you wanted a more detailed look, then you can go ahead and click on one of the Lotties. And we can see that brings us over to this page here. So we have a couple of options. We have the option of static, which of course is just not moving. And then we have the animation option. If we click on there, then as we can see that sets it to an animation. It also has some different tags. As we can see, we've got flat, e-commerce, shopping, transportation. These are all the various things it could be used for. And then obviously, if we wanted to as well, we can go ahead and click on download. At the top hand section here, we do have a couple of different options. So obviously, this will take us over to the same page, but we could go for animated illustrations or animated icons. So I'm just going to explore the animated icons. We have these same filter options and of course if we hover over them we can see that they start moving. So I'm going to try and filter this down a little bit now. So I'm going to select a couple of industries. I'm going to go for agriculture, animals and food. Then for camera I'm going to go for flat, colour, I'll go for outline and I won't select include people. So as we can see it's brought up quite a few results there. I'm going to be honest, it doesn't look like it's changed. So I'm just going to set the industry again. So a criticism I do have is the industry setting doesn't seem to be working as well as it could be. I think, for example, if we clicked on yacht, then we can see the animal isn't tagged there, but it is still bringing it up. 
As I said before, we can obviously set this to all, or we could set this to animated illustrations, animated icons, illustrations, or just icons. At the top, we do also have a vector section. If we clicked on illustrations, then that will just take us to the same page, but obviously just with the illustrations filter set. It's also worth noting that with the animated icons, if we click on there, there is also the option for different styles. So as we can see, style A, that has some color on there, so it's not just black and white. At the top, we also have a search bar. So you can obviously filter this again by all, or add those filters on there. So if I searched for animal, then we can see it's brought up some animals. We've got some pigs there to choose from as well as some different icons and animations. If we click onto the B, we do have some customization options. So obviously the color at the moment is black, but if I go on there, I could set that to yellow and then that just changes it. We can also adjust the stroke width. So I could put that up or I could put that down. If I go ahead and click on download, then I have the option of downloading it in the format of JSON, GIF, MP4 or MP4 free. We also have different settings there as well, like the pixel size and the delay. If we wanted to access our saved designs and animations, then we can click on our little profile there and we can go ahead and go on favorites. As we can see, the animated illustration that we saved earlier has shown up here. There is also a download section and this is where all your downloads will show. And that's pretty much everything. So what did I think about Creaty? Creaty had a extensive library of vectors and lotties. I love that there was the option to customize various designs and how easy it was to download them. There was a wide array of different filters and it's a little bit of a shame that the industry filters didn't seem to be working. That being said, the search filter worked flawlessly. When I was trying to look for animals in the industry filters, it wasn't bringing them up, but when I searched for it, it was absolutely fine. I would definitely recommend Creaty for all your Lottie and Vector needs. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time. In this Canva review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this design tool. If you have any questions, please comment them below, and I'll also leave a discounted link so you can always get your money's worth for Canva. Canva is a powerful design tool that can be used in education to create projects that not only look great, but can also help teach students the basics of digital design. Once you log into Canva, as we can see, we can select what we're using it for. So that could be a large company, non-profit or charity, small business, student, teacher, or personal. And then this will recommend designs and templates depending on what we select. So I'm just going to go for small business. And as we can see, we've got loads of different templates here. You also have the option to search for specific content. But first, let's just have a look at the different templates. So this is our recommended for you. We've got play with Canva, whiteboard, presentation, video, Instagram post square, poster, etc. We've got whiteboard, so we've got normal whiteboard, brainstorm whiteboard, flowchart, and more. We have presentations, social media, videos, print products, marketing, and more. So I'm gonna first go on Instagram post square, click on there, and this brings us over to the design editor. Now in this section here, we have templates. Again, you can search for a specific Instagram post template, or we do have some filters at the top where you could search via the color or the language. There's also some tags at the top if you wanted to click them like Labor Day, quote, September, sale, and they're just some different tags. So I'm gonna go for this one to start with. Now, if you didn't wanna use a template, you can just go straight past this and drag in your own picture and design, but I'm just gonna use this just for the sake of this. So first, we can edit the text. We can edit the text at the top. Obviously, that's got a site there. We could put our site in there and our own motto in there. For the text, for example, we can choose the font. We can choose the size, the color. We can put it bold or italic. Set the alignment. Set it as a list if we wanted to. Spacing, effects. So we could add that like neon or glitch. 
And then we've also got the option to animate the text as well. So we could go for that one. You can obviously do this for all the pieces of text or just any element, as we can see, even that line there. We can animate that, change the position. We can also copy the style, change the transparency, link it or lock it. Under templates, we have elements. Here is where we can drag in various different types of elements. We've got lines and shapes. If we wanted another one of those lines, we could drag one in and place that wherever we wanted to. There's also various different graphics like rips, got stickers, photos, videos, charts, tables, frames, grids, all different kinds of collections as well. So we could click onto this collection and then we could drag in some 3D blocky shapes. So there's loads of different customization options there. Below elements, we also have uploads. Here you can upload files or you could also record yourself. So you can upload images videos and audio. So say if for the background, I wanted to use my own background instead of this one, but still keep it similar to the template. If we upload a picture, you could just drag that. As we can see, that will change the background. You can also do this for videos and you can also stick audio on there as well. Below uploads, we have text. Here again, you can search for specific type of text. Depends on what you're looking for or we have a whole variety of different texts here. So you've got things from like menus to glitchy sort of text. And if you drag that in, same as before, you can just edit that. Now, if you wanted to undo something, we do have the undo button at the top there. Same with redo. Also at the top, we have file where we can create new design, show rulers and guides, show margins, show print bleed, find and replace text, save, save to folder, view all comments, version history, make a copy, download and open in desktop app. It's also automatically saving as we can see there, all changes are saved. You have the option of title in the post, insights, and also how long it will play. As we've got that animation on the text, this is gonna work as a video. So we can see it's animated for five seconds. You can edit the time in there and you could make it go slower or faster. We also have the more section where you can access even more content to create amazing designs. We've got other apps in there such as Bitmoji, Draw, which is in beta, where you can create simple sketches on top of your work. We have Giphy, emojis, Google Maps. You can import media from all of these social medias here. So there's loads of different options there. You can also set the size that you want to edit this in. You can zoom in or zoom out. And you can also add a page at the bottom there as well. Once you're happy, if you go and share, now there's only one person in my team. If I wanted to add someone else into my team, I could add on them there and add their email address. And then this could be shared with them. We can also copy the link, put it straight to Instagram, download it, share on social, print your design or more, which has loads of different sharing options. If we go back onto home, as we can see, this was just the Instagram post template there is loads of different templates to go through. If we go on to templates, we can see we can filter this by whatever. We could do this for Labor Day, food, birthday, business, etc. We also have the suggested for us and an inspired by your last design. And there's loads of different templates to choose from. Say if you wanted to use a video, say a mobile video, then we could create a blank mobile video or select from one of these templates. So if I wanted to go for the stop noise pollution, we could go and customize this template and this will take us over to the editor. Now, obviously the editor is similar to before, but this is working for a video. As we can see here, we've got the timeline. We can always add a page if we wanted to add some text at the end. We can add in those similar elements as before, upload our own media. We could do images or videos or audio and add our text. We can also adjust the timeline at the bottom so we can make sections longer or shorter. Under templates, we also have projects. Any projects we've worked on will show here. So as you can see, we've got our video that we were just working on then, and then our Instagram test post as well. And that's just about everything. So what did I think of Canva? Well, I do actually have some experience with Canva, and I still occasionally use it to this day. Canva really does make digital design super easy. And it's also a brilliant way to learn and get better at it. 
there's such a huge array of templates that you can create a design for whatever you're looking for. I would definitely recommend Canva. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.